We did All Night Long in the band, and it was about 1983, 1984. Oh, look, we got a big old red candle. And um, we had to do the little part, like we would you know, play our instruments and stuff, and then, whoa, look at that. Then we would be like, tumble in that said the boy, yeah. Hey, jumbo, jumbo, which pocket, oh, we go with. Oh, jumbo, line, tumble in that said the boy, yeah. Hey, jumbo, jumbo. <clears throat> I still remember that. Sounds like an eighth grader. Maybe what you remember, isn't it? All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome in. Hope everybody's having a great, great day. <clears throat> and uh, what's the markets doing? Up a little bit. Okay. Well, that's good. What's the AD? The AD is 38. So it was kind of weak and anemic, so to speak. Look at there, just hovering around that negative 50 area right there. Yeah, looks like it's heading a little bit downward. What did our opening 15 minutes do? That's the gray area from 47 to 58. So what, that's 11 points. And yesterday my prediction came true, didn't it? Wasn't it yesterday I said, uh, I don't know, maybe it didn't come true. Did I say it was going up yesterday or down yesterday at the last 30 minutes? I'm trying to make a call every day. Up. So what? Up, yeah, I think it did, didn't it? I think the last thirty minutes was up, up, up. So, <clears throat> and how do we arrive at that? Well, now today's one of those weird days, right, where we've got stuff above us and below us. So what could catch the falling night? Well, we've got this would be support, which is overnight low. We've got the beginning of the fifteen-minute range, which is a support area. We've got this pivot area. We've got the hourly midband, and we've got. VWAP now is above. So we've got something above. We've got the opening cash above. We've got the opening 15 minute range above. And we've got the overnight high above. So, and it's cool that you look and see, well, we're just kind of banded within both of them. So it's fairly what I would call a neutral day. And I can't make a call in the last 30 minutes based on what I'm seeing here because everything here, um, you know, if I had to guess, I'm saying downward. Right? I think there's, we're below more things here than we've got above us. So we'll see what the last 30 minutes, that's where the, the, when the pros come in and the algos kick in the last 30 minutes of the day. So generally, if you see them kicking up at the end of the day, you know, you, you, your reasoning would be, okay, if the algos are kicking in, the big guy's kicking in upward, you expect an up day the next day, perhaps. Now, who knows? All right, let's go to our volume profile, see what our volume profile is speaking to us. Look at there. I did some parabolic SARs yesterday. Isn't that cool? I got the down arrow. <laughs> Let's go to our regular volume profile. I was just playing around yesterday. Volume profile. The big green monster, as we affectionately refer to him or her. All right. I mean, it is what it is, right? We were over ball. We come back into the fair value range. Now we're below the 20 to 50 and above the 200 period moving averages. We have the point of control here where the most volume has traded. Uh, didn't surprise us at all to see some fillings of these gaps in here, right? And then probably a natural tendency to go up where volume was um, really traded. So, you know, looking at this, what am I? Well, I'm kind of just neutral, you know? I'm neutral, it could go here, it could go here. We draw those little probability cones. Here's what the probability cone looks like. That's what I think, you know, we're going in the next few days. So I'm very, very, very neutral. So then we go uh, from our call of market direction, we go to our little skew driver, which is kind of interesting today because the skew driver is showing up to about 48. Look at that, 48. So that's kind of weird, huh? Because we were 43 yesterday or 42, so we're 48 today. Wow, on an up day. And Ken and I told you yesterday, you know, what does that mean? Well, that means that these options are holding their value. We're not seeing much to come happen there. Oh, it ain't 2012, is it? Off. It's 11, 11. Oh, happy uh, Veterans Day to everybody. Where's Rod? Rod's one of our veterans. And to any of y'all that are veterans. Um, he said he was taking his mother to Applebee's. He's, oh. You must be rubbing off on him. I must be taking look, y'all. I was teaching my Alabama class today. Look, I want to show y'all something. And guess what? Was one of our I do a mind map with them every day. So we do mind mapping and I write down things that we want to talk about for class. And would you believe? Let me show you too. Show you right here. Cool. Yeah. Here it is. <clears throat> I 
loaded. And guess what? One of the things we talked about was, was, let me get that in here. Anyway, what we talked about. What's my darn thing? Where's my Apple? Yeah. Hey, man. You don't like Applebee's? What's wrong with you, man? Oh, I didn't hear what you were saying. I had to shut the door. Oh, sorry. Um, so my screwdriver is showing a 55. Well, let's see what's happening here. Now, you're, still, you're on delayed data, right? Well, not with uh, not with SPX, I'm not. Let's see. Do you have it uh, going at December the tenth? Yep. Huh. Anyone else getting that same thing? Uh, mine says forty nine. What's your say? Mine well, the with five. Me. The forty six hundred is what I looked at. See, I'm looking at wherever it goes. Five dollars and twenty cents. So mine's five. Oh, five twenty. Okay. Yeah, so I, I kind of wait till this says 520, right? So five, 520, so that's the original SKU driver is like you look at the spread that's trading for $5.20 and find out how far away from the money that is. Oh. Yeah. So maybe I had Where did you that. get the 520 um, figure? You know, that's a good question. And Ken, that was uh, from, uh, you know, Scott Rubel. So he does a lot of risk reversals and he does – a lot of SPX trades, and normally he'll make those 20-point wide SPX trades. And yeah. he, he, he just noticed that, you know, normally he would look for the spread that was trading at 520. And yeah. he, that's where he noticed the skew, you know, is how far it was away from at the money. So mm -hmm. that's just kind of his rule. And, and so I do the same thing. I try to find the one that's trading for 520, and you say it's 49. Well, that explains one of the reasons my numbers are different than yours. Yeah. I use a flat five dollars. Gotcha. So, Same here. Okay. Yeah. So you know, skew went up from yesterday. So you know, these options are certainly holding their. And again, this is kind of a, an anomaly, y'all. This doesn't normally happen that we stay outside this little range. So it's kind of cool to. I don't know what it's telling us, but you know, those options are holding values. This, you know, I still believe in the reversion that will come. So, you know, at some point, we'll see this revert back to the 20, 25 to 35 range. Uh, yeah, 25 to 35 range. But right now, we are hovering. I'm not exactly sure what that means. All right. So that's kind of how we use. So what am I? I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of neutralist right now. I'm kind of neutral. So that's good. So here we go. Now, do we have any... Trades being flashed on our little algo thingy. No, there's no action to take, really nothing to do. So let's just see if our Greeks, see what our Greeks look like. Well, first let's test our hedge. Nothing should have changed, but remember, I want you in the habit of going to analyze. You know, I go to the ES, I go to ball steps, I go to four, change this to 15%. And I hide my simulations and do single symbols so that I know how effective is my hedge. So on a $50,000 count, we have a 20% down move and fall goes upwards to 75, which is where I would expect it to be. And we're going to be up about $104,000. All right, that's good. So then how does the whole portfolio look? Portfolio doesn't look as good. And you see now it's saying that I'm going to be uh, negative $900. But hey, on a 20% down move, does, is that bad? Well, crap, no. It's actually really good, right? So what can I do to strengthen that today? Well, one thing I could do is, you know, we've got this little deal here that we could feel for 30 cents today instead of waiting it for 20. Well, what would that do? Well, if I were to close these 2450 puts, let's go back over here. And if we close the 24.50 puts, where are they? There they are. Let me take those off and I'll show you how that would strengthen our head. So right now it's down negative uh, 906. If I went ahead and harvested those today, shaboom, now we're up 13,000. Isn't that cool? And you're not paying a lot for to do that, right? So that's something I think, you know, I go in today and I go, yeah, I'll probably do that. 
So I may just go ahead and say, instead of paying 20 cents to do that, how much did 20 cents cost me? 20 cents would cost me $35 to close that. Are you kidding? So if I go to 30, how much would that be? $50? It's only going to cost me $15 more? Well, to get the protection on the downside? Well, heck yeah, I'm going to do that any day. Let's see if we can get feel here. Maybe maybe go to 35. Let's get feel. I want to protect my hedge. That's what we do. We protect the hedge. Right? I want protection. A lot of people have said that probably during their dating lives. And now they've got little road rats running all over the place. So now we're feeling. Ta da! Isn't that beautiful? So now we go, we look at our scan, at our hedge now, and our hedge is, should be up $13,000. Da! Yeah. And so if we go back to the single symbol, just to see what our ES hedge is doing, then we are now up 118,000. So, you know, you just want to keep that thing really, really strengthened. So now I need to put a GTC order on my next shorts. So I got some loans coming off in eight days. I got some loans coming off in 19 days. I got, here are the ones that I just filled. So we've got some shorts here. So we'll go in here to the 50 day ones. And then we'll put a GTC here. So we'll go close, create closing order. We will buy those back at 20 cents. That's the plan anyway, right? Then we'll do a GTC order, which you cannot do in Tastyworks. Come on, Shoshnoff, let's get them together. So now we've got another working order for our next set of shorts to come up. Any questions about that? So we've got 70 cents to go. Now this one's moving fairly quickly, isn't it? Where we're going to, remember we sold those naked puts the other day? Uh, that's kind of cool. So we want that to fill at $1.50. You know, if I had to fill them, I'd go ahead and buy them for $2.70. They were over $3 the other day, or $2.90 or so. So they moved down a little bit. So let's see our Greeks now. So we got 208 Delta. Okay, so we're bullish. We've got positive beta and positive beta. I mean, how much better can it get? Now, and I was, I chatted with Matt a little bit about this yesterday. If you're going to do this, if you're going to do this strategy, you got to be okay with some swings in the p &A. It's going to have to. I mean, I think by the time we were closing yesterday, I think I was down 1,800 in this account, you know? So... I had a big swing, so we're up 640 today. So we hadn't recaptured all of what we did yesterday, but you know, you just gotta keep that in mind. You know, this is this is probably not for the faint at heart um, a strategy where you go, oh, we're gonna see it go up every day. It's not necessarily so. So just keep that in mind that you know it's a good strategy, uh, but yeah, you're gonna see some you're gonna see some swings. And you just got to be okay with that. I think the best way to look at it, though, is this. I'm looking at it like if my TQs, which is my main thing that I'm investing in, if it goes down, don't look at your P&L and go, oh, crap, I lost a lot of money. No, you got to look at it like, hey, it is Christmas in July, baby. It is, you know, we are, we can, we see some bargains and Black Friday sales. So you got to be willing. That's why we set it up so that you would have cash on hand to make those purchases if it goes down. And you just got to go, you know, I'm not looking at my net lit. Now, interestingly enough, I've been contacted by some people on Reddit, you know, I, I get run out of there all the time. A lot of people, I guess, hate my comments. But anyway, and I delete them. But a couple guys have, you know, commented on some things and said, you know, hey, uh, Tell me about, do you need this money in this account? No. So if this $50,000 account, you know, goes to zero, is it going to, you know, mess up with my standard of living? No, because I don't, this, this one just sits here, right? I don't do anything with it. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, you, if you're, you know, playing with money that you can't afford to lose, uh, I want you to be cautious. I don't want you to, you know, just blindly go into stuff. You got to think this stuff out, and you got to buy into the this, the process. 
Matt and I know that Nick Saban is all about the process. You know, you come in and you get beat by, well, who was it, UL Monroe, your first year, whatever, who at Law Tech, whatever it was, you know, and people's like, oh, man, he didn't do good at Miami. He's not going to do good at Alabama. We even got people this year like, oh, man, it's over. You know, it's over. No, you've got to trust the process. We've got a process that we put in place, and it's a pretty darn good process. We have pretty much thought of everything. Now, who was it that shared yesterday? I like the thing, you know, we've added the thing about the 200-day moving average, and if it's, if it's below it, we need to get out. And looking at that at the end of the month, right? At the close of the end of the month, that's when we look at it. So we probably shouldn't be looking at that day. That's good. So you don't get whipsawed around. I like that too. So we've got a strategy. We've got a strategy that I need to memorialize on paper so that we all know exactly what to do. There's never any guesswork. There's never any, oh gosh, what do we do now? The fun part's going to be, you know, on the day when the market does drop 20%, you know, and we're all going to be like, we've got an emergency meeting, you know, you got to tell your boss that you're sick, pee stomach, or you got to go to the bathroom, install, and we got to start, you know, whipping stuff off and closing trades and, and doing all the fun stuff. And that's fun when those days happen, right? Last time I did it, I told you I was in the uh, podiatrist chair as he's about to, you know, tell me I got to have my toe snapped off. So, you know, it's a pretty fun day. And he goes, oh, that's you're down a lot of money. And I go, oh, I bet I ain't. You know, and then you see their face like, really? You're up that much, huh? So, you know, uh, y'all have never seen it, though. That's the problem, right? That's the problem. So you go into coaching your football team. So if I'm the coach and I'm saying, y'all, we're going to have to change your whole way of thinking about things. We're going to have to show you that we're going to be winners. And you sit there and go, man, I hadn't been a winner. Man, I've been with Tasty Trade for seven years and man made a dime. I'm just losing. What am I doing wrong? My life is horrible. You know, I suck. I'm the worst trader on the planet. And you go, well, listen, y'all, I'm telling you, we're, we're going to the Super Bowl. Y'all go, going to the Super Bowl? We can't win a junior high game. So we got all things that we got to think. Y'all never seen the stuff happen that I've said has happened, that has happened to me. Y'all have never seen it. You've never experienced it. Y'all may have had those times in your trading career, but while we've been together, you've not seen it. And we've done this for about a year. We started in December of last, of last year. So we'll see, you know, uh, but don't get so used to looking at that net lick. I think we got a good strategy. I believe in the process and let's go with the process. Just the process of going through and doing everything. So what would you do on a day like today? Well, some positive deltas. Mm -hmm. Um, Positive theta, no, positive theta, no, what to do, right? Now, I guess, you know, I could do a calendar trade. If you needed more vega, you could do a calendar trade. First thing I would do is look and see what is VIX doing today. You want VIX to be going down, right? And VIX is down a buck. So it's at 1769. Let's look at the chart of VIX. So here we are at VIX. So you know, if you're kind of looking at that, you know, floor level, we're a little bit above the floor. Um, but I don't need positive vega. Everybody see, I don't need it. Uh, what do I have over here? I've got positive vega. I've got positive theta. And I've got positive delta. I don't necessarily need additional positive vega unless I want to reduce my delta a little bit. But when you reduce your delta, you're taking away the power that is the TQs that are giving you all that positive delta. Look at the delta I'm getting here, 253. So you don't want to pommel all of that and take that off, right? We've got the covered call. The covered call is at 95% with one day to go. How about that? Pretty good. I wish I'd have sold two. Should I have sold two? Yes. Why? Because the chart showed me that we were over bought. I didn't believe the chart. Chart says overbought. Big green monster says overbought. I should have sold two covered calls here, but I've been used to this thing just going up, going up, going up. So when I, you know, you know, I, when I was here, I go, well, it's probably going to keep on going. I didn't trust the chart. This was the time to sell. Is now this time to sell another one? No. Why? Because I am neutral. I think I'll sell another one for tomorrow. 
Now we'll evaluate tomorrow and see what we look like for next week, whether we're going to sell another cover call. So what's the plan? What are you going to do, Bob? Here's what I kind of like about this. I don't think there's nothing to do. Everything looks good. Let's look at our individual components. See what y'all are chatting about. Hello, Ken, Rico. Bobby, can you show me, do you have these in different groups? Yep. Let's see. Show groups. Uh, which one you want to see? Okay. So I had mine in groups. So when you take it out of groups, that's where you can see the delta. Okay. Yeah, you have to take it out of groups to see all that, right? So now here's kind of a cool thing. Let's see. Uh, let me show you this. This is cool. Uh, let's see my one 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 seventeenth. When does that expire? Got eight days on those. Yeah, that's that's probably my lowest one. Let's see one 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 seventeenth. Let's go to the analyze tab. Let's go to. Ooh, give me that. Uh, what I want to do. One expiration, let's do portfolio. Now what's this? This is kind of cool when you start looking at 11117. Look at there. Isn't that cool? So take that off, go single symbol, 11117. Now I gotta do this, that's MES. I just want to show you this that you can look at your individual uh, finger bajikis. Here it is. Isn't that cool? Here's my one one ones that are expiring on the 17th. Very, very cool, right? So here we are. I'm up $157. I'm looking if we have a pullback within, you know, the next few days, then I could be up $907. Matt, this is a trade you were talking about yesterday. You did your first one one one. Congratulations. What a great trade. Look at this. If we go up, I'm still going to make my 157. If we go down, I'm still going to make my 157. I'm even going to go down, what, 10% here? Is that what my price line says? Yeah, 10%. And if we go down 10% near expiration, then boom, chicka boom, chicka boom, chicka boom. I mean, I am, I'm money. Now, what we talked about yesterday, though, is 11117. Look at this. See those negative three, though? That's 97% profit. This is the great thing that Ken was talking about yesterday. Why not take off this? Right, take off that risk of that 39.60. And what does that do to the trade? Let's last tab. Let's go downward. Downward. Take off that 39.60. What does it look like? Looks like a put debit spread. Look at that, y'all. Oh, huh? uh, yeah, debit. Sorry. Yeah, put debit spread. Look at this. And then that thing's up 600 if we have a fall. Well, that's that's free money, y'all. Why am I not taking that off? Ken, well, tell me, get in there and close it. Close the damn thing. Yeah, huh? uh, you're not, you paid for the, the debit. Yeah, so this is a free profit. trade. This is a free that's trade, y'all. And the other thing is you can take the the the, uh, the the margin that you ate up on the short and get another one, one, one going. And you yeah. just keep cascading. Now, uh, and, and then... Let me see. There was one other point um, that I wanted to make. Ah, oh, darn. Um, well, it'll come to me. But you know, at why you wanted to do this is um, the um, oh, as you stagger these things, that you know, because at first, because you got all that negative vega with the short put, you know, initially you can have a big drawdown, and this will help. That'll help take that down. I mean, I'm looking at my. I got ten. One 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 trades, five in the ES and five in the micros. And I got a lot of negative vega. I don't like it. I don't know how to fix it. So well, yeah, what Ken is talking about is when we sold this thing, right? When we mm -hmm. sold three of them, we sold it for 20. So we took in three hundred dollars on selling those. Okay, so how much would it cost me to close this thing now? Look at this, y'all. Well, it's gonna cost me 60 cents. Well, how much is that? With fees and everything, y'all, it's going to cost me $13. I've already made the money. Everybody see how sweet that is? I remember what I wanted to say. Yeah. This goes back to the tasty trade rules. You know, the most money is made in the first part of the of the trade. You go far out in time or out of the money, you know, up to you. You, 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 you sell at 45 days and buy, and buy back at 21. The same rules apply with the 111. The, the amount of money you make 
per day tapers off after a certain period of time. I mean, I looked at mine this morning, I scanned them all, and it's like some of them are so old, I'm going to take them off. You know, is instead of waiting, you know, 40 days to make all that short premium decay down, cover it and put on another one, you know? So. Uh, yeah, I, I wonder, Ken, should, I mean, if I took this off today, you know, normally our rule is put them on on down days. You know, I don't know. It's, it's uh, I guess you could put them up on up days, but it, I mean, it depends on your market assumption. I'm neutral. So, you know, you could probably do one today, but I think if I were to take this off, yeah, here's the cool thing about it. Y'all got to understand, if I take off a short put, what does that do to my deltas? That brings my deltas down, right? What's it going to do to my theta? It's going to bring my theta down, but it's also going to increase my vega because a short naked put is a negative vega trade. So once you start getting into the, the thing of, hey, wait a minute, I start knowing if I close a put, a short put, that's going to give me negative delta. It's going to take away from my theta, but it's going to give me positive vega. When y'all start getting to that area, I mean, the world's your oyster. When you start knowing when you close a, a trade, what happens to your, you know, your Greeks, man, that is so, 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 so. So, you know, uh, I don't have a lot of positives. I, I don't know. I could, I could easily take it off. I can, um, I can not take it off. I mean, I'm kind of liking what I'm doing is that overall, my Greeks are good. Bobby, don't tamper with too much. Just let this, you know, little thing run. You're positive delta. Are you fine with that? Well, yeah, because I have to have room for my TQs to run. I'm, I'm tampering it back with some of my hedges, but I got to let that run. I've got positive theta. If I close that uh, put today, I think that those three puts were giving me about four positive thetas. So, you know, am I, it's not necessary that I have a lot of theta because the TQs are running the in income portion of our portfolio. Right? The TQs are running the show. So I just don't want to have theta drag. I don't want to have negative theta that's tearing me up or everything. So look, our, this is where the majority of my theta is coming from, is from my micro trades. So what we basically did is said, look, the daily micro selling a put is a wonderful trade, but I like the one 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 just a little bit better. That's all it is. That's all it is. So I look at my account now and I go, I'm perfect. I got to do nothing. You know, I did one trade today. We we made our hedge better. So when we did this, we bought and closed these. What did that do? That inc that uh, decreased my delta, right? Because these were short puts, so they were long delta. So if you close that, they, <laughs> make sure I'm getting this right. You close long delta puts, that should make your delta shorter. So that was fine. Uh, that should have increased my vega because the short puts are negative vega trades. And it decreased my theta, though, because this is a positive theta trade. See how cool that is? And once you start whooping all the, that kind of information, now you have to do like I do, right? You got to put your eyes up in your brain right here because you're looking for what it does. And it's kind of cool that you can just all of a sudden just kind of whoop that out. There's just not a lot to do today. And I like that. So the market's moving. Looks like it might be moving downward a bit. Let's go back and look at it for a second. What's our NQ doing? Let's look at it on our volume profile. Let's see what our NQ is doing. Q, baby. I said NQ, baby. Here we go. Look at there. So... We were overbought, we're fairly priced. Where are we going? Probably right here. We know that. You know, some of these gaps will fill. This will happen. Wouldn't be surprised if we go to the 50 area here. But again, we draw our little cone, right? Our little cone in, into the future. And what does it look like? It looks like this. A little probability cone kind of looks like. There she is. Isn't that sweet? Not good. You know, let's look at something else. Let's look at 
One thing we don't look at enough is our expected moves. Let's see if I got that. Expected moves. Expected moves. And this is something I got from Don Kaufman. Thank you, Don. I think this is it. Expected move, and I might have, oh, I got expected move cone, and we got everything. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Well, that comes from Kaufman. I think the move cone comes, it's can't. I think it's in normal toss. Yeah. Okay, good. So we see here, uh, it's kind of cool to look at expected move. You know, here's expected move of SPX. And you see, most times, Everything is within the expected move. So then you go outside the expected move, outside the expected move, and then things, you know, kind of go back to most times. Everything is well contained within the expected move. So right here for this week, uh, we are, we almost tapped at the bottom. We haven't been there yet of the bottom of the expected move. And you see the green line here. Here's the top of the expected move, and you've not hit that here. But it's kind of good to look at expected moves. Let me share this with y'all. Let me share this with y'all. Share green. Y'all can open it up and think this one. Share. I'll put it into our little chat here. Let me see. That's the third thing, third chart I look at each morning. Yeah, it's an important one, right? And I need yeah. to look at it more. Let's see what else we got here. So let's it go, go into it every morning. Oh, yeah, every morning, right? And I think this works on anything we put in. So I think we can do in Q. I think it'll do it. It's, it works on everything. Yeah. So and you can go a, into settings and you can, it gives a middle value, but it's hardly visible. So mm -hmm. I changed mine to blue so I can see the midpoint. And that, that, that's a good guide. And because there is a truism, I don't know how true it is, that if something blows out the expected move, it'll go. It'll, it'll go another expected move further out. In other words, if it blasts past the first standard deviation, look to see it stop at the second. And uh, so uh, I don't know how true that is, but I've, 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 I've gathered that through my ramblings around the, uh, the options uh, sites on the internet, YouTubes, so. And well, that's great information though. That's good, yeah. really good to know. Let's see what I love that cone, that cone is, Awesome. Yeah, let's look at this, see what it looks like on the EQ, y'all. So that's all we're doing is we're, we're, we're forming a, where's my column at on there? Oh, oh, here we go. So yeah, 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 yeah. Look at this, y'all. So, you know, this is kind of what I was drawing, right? This is our, our cone going forward. So it allows us to kind of, you know, figure out, you know, where's, what's the probabilities of price doing what price is going to do at uh, such and such date. And you see the date goes out, of course, that it's widened. Let me share this one with y'all too. I mean, y'all could do this, but let me just share this too. So we get the cone. Share. Something that nice that y'all might play with. If anyone doesn't know how to open those up, then let me know in the chat or say something and figure that out. That's the first chart I look at every morning. What you just had there. That yeah, is that's, the first thing. It's cool, right? I mean, it just kind yeah. of gives you a, you know, it gives you a little uh, confidence in, in what we're doing here. Um, yeah. Implied volatility. Let's see what else we got over here that we might need to. Expected move call. I call it my corral because I'm crazy enough that I need boundaries. <laughs> don't we all? Or don't we all? Hold on a second. No, I didn't want to do that. How did I, do that? How did I get out of this? Unbelievable. Show side bar and show up. Oh, I just did. Let me close this. All right. So let's go back to our chart. Just like things were starting to go. Oh, they're going up a little bit. What's it doing in the Q? Let me see. So it's, it's kind of cool, y'all. And I think this may fit y'all better as well. Like, uh, you know, when, um, you know, you just don't have to do a lot of trading with these. I mean, remember before we were doing a daily trade, we had to do this, we want to make sure we get, I kind of like this. We just don't have to do as much, you know. So NQ is doing quite nicely, up 0.5% today. Very sweet, very sweet. There's not a lot of 
stuff to do. Now, it is going to be interesting when I bring the IRAs in and we start trying to do some stuff on it. Um, someone asked, well, can't you do some of the black swan hedge stuff in there? Yeah, you can. I think the problem is you, you're going to have to do it all as one trade, right? You can't. It's going to be hard to sell the three naked, you know, puts in an IRA account, uh, you know, without doing the fives at the same time. So, and well, the one thing that I've noticed that I tried it on Tasty Work in the IRA there, it's you're going to be doing it in the micros or nothing, okay? Yeah, because yeah. they're not going to let you. I don't have enough. They're not going to let you short SPY or SBX unless you got big bucks, and yeah. um, and you're not going to get portfolio margin. So that's that's really out of the question. And uh, so they. Tastyworks will not allow you to sell a full e-mini. You're going to have to do the micro. That's a lot of commission, especially at Tastyworks. Uh, you know, uh, I got great commissions that toss, but at Tastyworks, they suck. And um, But it's hard to do. And, well, you know, there's one variation of bronze where you go in and you buy four full tranches at once, and that gives you a net long of eight. And then you can... Um, then you can start selling one, two, or three short puts and still be within, you'll still be covered. And that's how you generate the next generation of, 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 uh, of tranches. And uh, so that's, that's a, a good technique, but it costs you, uh, it's going to cost you uh, up front. Well, that's kind of what I like on this. You see me do a couple of days, like when the account's net lick was over like, a thousand twelve hundred dollars in a single day i was like wow what a great day on an up day to go ahead and buy a full tranche right so you're going i'm going to use yeah. some of my earnings you know that those explosive uh you know increase days when you get a lot of money made on your tqs you know then you use a little yeah. bit of that for your edge i like that i really like that um, i don't mind buying insurance I mean, you know, insurance is great. I'm covered to the hip. I, I got it all. I got long-term care. I got the best health. They cancel my dental coverages. Those, sorry, SOBs, but uh, I'm registering back it, up for that today. So. All right. Any questions on anything? Oh, I was going to tell you what I'm thinking about on my for my IRAs, dude. Here's what I'm thinking about. Y'all have heard of uh, Hedge Fundies, what, Excellent Adventure or Big Adventure, whatever it is. I think I'm, that's what I'm going to do pretty much. I think I'm going to do like 55% either UPRO or TQs and 45% of a TMF bond fund. But I think I'm going to do it like I've done in this one. So I'm going to say I'm going to keep 10% cash. And then with the 90%, I'm going to split up 55% of the 90% into TQs or U, UPRO and then 45% of the 90% into the TML. And I just like having that extra little cash buffer up there that if I want to buy something, you know, or do something, I, I've got a little bit of cash out there to do it. Otherwise, I could uh, simply, if I need cash to do something, well, even if I go above my 10% cash buffer to need to buy TQs or UPRO, then I would, I would convert shares of TMLs into either UPRO or TQs. I think that's the plan. So I don't think there's gonna be a lot to show there other than I am going to run it through the Lachello algorithm and let it make you know, decisions for me. And then rebalance that one probably quarterly. Whereas on this one, my, my goal is probably to rebalance annually on the account that I'm doing here. I'll probably rebalance this one annually and I'll probably do my IRAs. I'll rebalance them for Only because I can't do as much, I don't think I can do as much trading around them, as much options trading around them. So I will, I will rebalance those quarterly, uh, get a little more activity in them, and I'll rebalance this one in for what that's worth. So maybe like watching paint dry when we get together and do that. But I'm excited about this, y'all. I mean, I'm sitting here going, you know, this is a dang good plan. I just, I really, really like what we're doing. Y'all just be cautious. Don't put more money toward it than you can afford to lose. And, you know, hopefully 
you know, in a year or two, we're going to see like, wow, you know, it's just going to blow our minds and go, wow, y'all remember back when this account was X amount of dollars and, and we took it to whatever. I mean, y'all, I cannot imagine. You know, Rod's not with us today, but, you know, when he started this in his 401k, he started right when I was. And, I mean, dude's killing it over there. So, I can only imagine, you know, he's probably having another good day. You're going to have to sit through some losing days. You're just going to have to. And this is this is big boy ball right here, y'all. This is, uh, you know, you got to strap it on and come on to play and take risks. Um you know, I mean, think about how many people never take risk in their life. And, you know, I mean, Matt's got Caroline, he's got his beautiful wife, he's young, you know, and to get to where he wants to be, you know, he's going to have to take some risk. But at the same time that I'm a risk taker, I cover myself on the downside. I've got, like we just talked about, I've got every insurance known to me. How many of y'all got long-term care insurance? You know, I was, I've got five years of long-term care. If I have to go in the nursing home, I actually called nursing homes that I would like to go with and figured out how much they cost for a year if I had to go in. Then what did I do? I went and figured out the uh, research, the annual amount that that increases per year, you know, the cost. And uh then I went out and bought the maximum coverage that I could find in long-term care insurance. Now, based on my health, I was only able to get five years. Is that okay? Yes. Why? Because the average stay in a long-term care facility is only four years. So if you're going in there kind of at an end of life thing and you're going into a nursing or rehab facility, you know, chances are you're going to be there less than four years. So I got five years of coverage for Beth based on her age when I got it. I bought coverage and she has unlimited numbers of years of coverage. And I pay for that. You know, I pay, I don't know, $40 a month for that coverage. And it's indexed to inflation and, you know, it covers our state, whether we have to have someone come in house to take care of us or out of house, you know. So we've got life insurance that covers us and, you know, an estate with a trust set up. If something happens to us and God forbid someone has to raise my kids, we got all that taken care of. You know, we've got the disability coverage. If, if someone becomes disabled and we can't make earnings, we've got that covered. Uh, auto insurance, you have your home insurance. So I've got a lot of things covered, right? I'm, we're risk managers. All of us are risk managers. We have to manage the risk that come about in our lives. But at the same time, Y'all, we've got to, we got to open it up a little bit. You got to, now I know it depends on where your life cycle is. You know, if you are at or in retirement, that may be a little bit different, but you know, I'm sitting here going, you know, I'm rolling the dice on a few things to go. I'm trying to make generational uh, wealth differences, um, you know, that, that, you know, will hopefully help my kids' kids on down the road, not to tell be little snarty little brats. You know, like the estate plan that we set up the other day, my kids don't get any money until they're 25. You know, you're going to at least, you know, have a little bit of grown up. Uh, I've seen what happens when an 18 year old gets money and it ain't pretty. So they get some money at 25 and they get some money at 35. So we got it broken out, right? That you, you get a little bit here to get you going. But, you know, you get the rest of it when you turn 35, when you're a lot wiser. And hopefully, you know, they're listening to their old dad now. And, you know, uh, I want them to be risk managers as well. So what we're doing here is you and I are opening it up a little bit. We're opening the playbook up, you know. Uh, we used to run the wishbone, y'all. You know, uh, what was it, three plays and cloud of dust? You know, that's, that's what we did, right? We run the wishbone. But times have changed. You know, now our quarterback uh, rarely lines up behind the center. We don't want to get close enough to scratch his butt. We get far enough to where we can, you know, take a shotgun snap, and we're going to sling it a bit. Now, a lot of our passes are going to be short passes, right? We don't do the bomb every play. The bomb is our lottery winnings from 
uh, the crash. That's what we're hoping for on the crash. But we got to manage the short game. We got to manage the defense. We got to manage the special teams. It's, it's just a whole comprehensive strategy. So if this is your first day, you know, popping in, you're like, what the hell is this? I understand. Uh, and, and you'll get it, right? You'll you'll kind of get what we're we're going here. But it's just kind of a comprehensive thing, and it's something that you should be able to do. I think we've been doing it in 30 minutes a day, right? You know what to do. You know what the plan is. There's no guessing, and we're going to the next day. And it's really fun. I've enjoyed, you know, watching the the profits uh, from this. Now, are we going to be profitable this week compared to last week? You know, we may be down. This may be our first down week. We'll see. You know, we're up half a percent on the NQ today. Depends on what tomorrow brings. We don't know. But overall, I would expect that we're going to be profitable than when we started uh, with this particular strategy back in October. So am I wanting to bring anything else into it? No, I'm just exhausted. I'm just tired. And I know y'all know that feeling too, right? Because, you know, I mean, last night I'm up at 2 o'clock and I'm reading things about leverage ETLs because you know, I want to be educated. And that's my passion. So outside of here, you know, what do I do? I read. I, I study, I'm a student of the markets. You know, I am engaged in, a, in the study and the mastery of financial markets. That's what my passion is. So, you know, we, I overcomplicate a lot of stuff. I make it overly, you know, it should be a lot more simpler than I present it. You know, if you're really looking at this screen for the first day, you're like, what the crap, man? What the ADs and you got little gray parts and all these lines on it. This means nothing. This means absolutely, you don't even need this, right? We don't need this. Just run the plan, run the plan. Why do I do this? It's fun, right? It's fun to say, hey, at the end of the day, I think it'll do this, you know, and I'm right about 50% of the time, 50% of the time I'm wrong. Uh, it's nice to go, hey, let's see where, you know, our direction's going and our probability cones and all of our little stuff that we do. And it doesn't matter a dang thing. Just run the plan. So let's say that you want to start out and you're a lot more risk averse than I am, here's what you do. Here's what you do. And you want to run it with TQ. Now, here's the cool thing. You don't want to run with TQ, don't run it with TQ. So leverage ETF, run it with the Qs. Run it whatever you want to. But LaCello said, LaCello told us, you need to pick a volatile asset. You need to pick something that's going to have ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs. Because that's where the, the, the algo comes in to tell you to buy when it's slow, and sell when it's high. So, you know, if you're a lot of less risk averse than me, and you've got a $10,000 account, okay, here's what I'd do. I'd put, uh, I'd put 10% of that, which is $1,000 into cash. So now, if you have $1,000 in your account, you know you cannot, well, I guess you could, but you cannot lose all your money. You're going to have $1,000 st stacked away in cash. Isn't that cool? Then on the 90%, and I don't want to, here's where you'll get overly, and they have changed my thing, and it just makes me so mad. I don't know why I can't write this good. So you take the other 90%, so that's $9,000 in the account, right? And you do 80% of that, <laughs> this is where you're going to get 80% of that into your asset. What's your asset? Is it UPRO? UPRO, or is it TQQQ? So that's going to be how much? That's going to be $7,200. Am I right? Eight times nine, nine times eight is 72. All right. And then you take the other 20% of that 90% and you're going to do 1,800. What did they do to my dang thing? It just kills me. All right, here we go. So then you're going to put 1,800 into the bonds, the triple 20-year uh, treasure. Okay, so now you got TQs here. So the most that this thing can go to is zero. All right, so you lose 7,200. Wang. Most this could go to is zero. Wang. Well, generally, these are not going to go in the same direction during a big fall. Now, anything can happen, right? Anything can happen. And if it all goes to zero, you're still left with $1,000 cash. Okay. Now, is that going to change your life if you lose everything but $1,000 cash? That's what you got to ask yourself. Are you willing to risk $9,000 to 
towards something that has a potential in 10 years to make you $400,000. And that's our goal, right? That is our goal. And if I were y'all and you're young, well, you need to be dca and baby, into this as well. So you dollar cost average in. You get the old paycheck. And instead of going to the Applebee's on a date night with a, you know, then, you know, you're sitting there going, I'm going to put $100 in every pay period or 50 in every pay period. You need to be contributing to something. You need to be considering something. But no, we have to, you know, we have to impress everybody, don't we? The good thing about being 50 years old is you don't give a crap what people think. Most. Most. The older you get, the less you care. And I wish to God, you know, well, I guess I was that when I was young. You know what I drove when I was 24 years old? Everybody else had the sharp cars and everything. I drove a 1994 Plymouth Voyager minivan. You know why I drove minivan? Because I was a youth worker at the church, a youth pastor. So I had to take the teenagers and everything to, you know, the movies. And we go to events and worship events and sing, you know, all kinds of stuff. And so a uh, practical little sports car didn't make sense for me. I had to take all these kids around. So I'm driving a, uh, you know, a minivan. So what do I drive now? I drive a 2017 prison van, 12 passenger, because I got all Nothing my kids. wrong with driving a minivan. I hey, drive one hey, as well. There you go, man. You see, I mean, and people go, oh, God, I don't want to drive a minivan because it ain't the cool thing. Because you, you, you finally accept, hey, you know what, I'm a parent. And do you know what else I drive? Now, I could go out and I could buy me a, I don't know, I could buy a Corvette, I could buy a Camaro, I could buy anything I wanted to. I could buy, I could put cash on it and I don't have to finance any car. But I'm driving a 2011 Nissan Redmond that was given to me by my mom. And guess how much is owed on my Nissan Redmond? Zero. Because every four years, mama likes to get her a new car. Or every five, or every now and then, mama gets her a new car. And she says, Bubba, I don't know how to do it. And so I say, Mama, I'll do it for you. And I save her thousands of dollars. And mama's like, well, Bubba, I'm going to give you my old car. She's been doing that for years. I'll drive mama's old car. I don't care. You call me mama's baby. Mama's doing just fine. Mama got plenty of money. Mama want to buy her a new car, pay cash for it. Mama goes and buys her a new car and pays cash for it. And I get her the best deal possible because I'm a shrewd negotiator. And I've told y'all how to get you a brand new car. If you're going new car shopping, you need to contact me first. I will tell you how to steal you a deal. I have it down to a science. And I say, mama, can she get out of her car? And you know what? My kids are on top of my car and they jump on it and it's dented on the top and it's scratched on the side. And I don't care. I don't care. I want everybody to think I ain't got a dime in my name. Right? You never want your relatives to think you got any money. So they all think I'm poor as dirt. Everybody thinks I ain't got a, you know, I ain't got nothing. And that's the way I go around. If you ever read uh, Stanley's book, the, the Millionaire Next Door, the average millionaire driving an old 10-year-old pickup truck, he worked as a um, uh, auctioneer, you know, that's who he is. He worked in real estate, auctioneer, you know. He's got a cow or two, got a goat or two, got a donkey or two. Somebody you wouldn't think had a dime to their name. And these are the millionaires in our country. But it comes with protecting your arse, right? Risk management. But you got to take risks. God, you got to take risks. You got to take risks. And the problem that really gets me upset is seeing so many people, you know, giving their money to uh, these portfolio managers that don't know what the heck they're doing. Guess what my fee structure is on my hedge fund? Does anybody know what my fee structure is? You know, how there's, you know what there is, a two, a two and 20, right? Well, we got to get 2% to cover the, the uh, you know, our expenses and blah, 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 blah. Uh-uh. That's not what we do. You know what we do? We do 20%. You pay me 20% of the profits. Well, what about expenses? I don't care about expenses. What if you don't make a profit? Then you don't pay me nothing. Now, how many people do that? You know, you got a high water mark in the fund, right? So if, if you're not over the high water mark, you don't make any money. Well, that's a losing proposition. So I don't mind, you know, getting 20%, but I tell them, hey, you don't have any expenses. You ain't got no expenses. And if we don't make profit, you don't pay me nothing. 
So that's, you know, that's where you got to go, though. You got to, you got to, got to, got to, got to, got to take risks. Ken, you can talk about risk. Oh, my gosh, surely over the years. I mean, tell them you, you, you take risk. Oh, absolutely. Well, one thing you learn when you start to study options is that premium money equals premium equals risk. The more, if you don't risk, you don't make money. That's just that there's a direct correlation to risk and money. And you're quite right. When you're young, you, uh, you, you pour the oil on, go for it. And as you get older, you become more defensive. But in the early days, you, you can uh, you, you, you go for it. Like just, just, just keep investing and saving. And... Um, and utilizing that money to leverage it up with these options to get some big bucks. I do have a, 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 a I do have a comment about doing the aim with the TQs. Back when I was uh, working out the model, and you addressed this too, Bobby, because you put that was why you put the governor in, and I I was thinking it was self governing, but I was fiddling with a way of when it goes down. To, uh, to to slow that down so I would so the cash wouldn't disappear. Well, when I was studying these leverage ETFs that you introduced the other day, and this is just a rough rounded guess, is that when the TQs go up, they go up three times, roughly three times what the Qs do. But when they go down, they go down roughly two times. So it's like, it's like taking three steps forward and two back. So there's a bias upwards. So there's another way to govern how AIM works. And I have decided, because I was sitting on the fence because of risk, do I want to do this with TQs? And um, the answer is yes, because it's got that extra governing in it. So it's extra safety. Believe it or not, as weird as it sounds, I believe TQs to be safer than doing the Qs. And that's right now a thought experiment. But if you have trouble with the amount, then divide, if you're going to put, a, if you're going to put $15,000 to the Qs, to the TQs, uh, and you're worried about that 3X, well, then instead of putting 15,000, put in five. And that'll be roughly equivalent to putting in $15,000 worth of the Qs, but your downside is less than the upside. So it, it's, a, it's a better, I think it's a better deal. And that's one thing you, you, you think about with what we're doing is we got to manage risk and this is a way to do it. And, I, and so I'm all in now on the TQs or the U pros or whatever, even later in two times. But if you go look and see what the, the average down move is versus the average up move, and you'll see roughly, it, it doesn't go down as bad. And I saw that with silver, uh, the, the, the leverage silver. It, it hardly went down one time. It, in other words, it followed, it, it followed silver. But when it went up, it went up three times. That's a well-governed ETF there. Anyway, that's my rant. Yeah, you bring up something really, really good. And, I, and I, I, let's see if I can illustrate it here. Okay, so we start out with $10,000. All right. Okay, so check this out. So we're going to do three different portfolios, right? So 2010 is when the TQs started out. So let's do this. Let's say we put all of our money in the Qs. Okay. And we did 100% of that. Everybody's following along. Let's do a, another and we do the TQQQ, okay? Now, here's what's going to blow your mind. Ken, you brought up an excellent, excellent, excellent thing, and I want to show you all this. Okay, so we're going to do one portfolio starts with $10,000 in the Q, and one starts with 100% in the TQs. All right, let's run. Let's analyze the portfolio. I want y'all to see this. Okay. If you put it in the Qs, y'all, here you are. You're the blue line. You're at $78,000. Okay, if you put it in the T cubes, you're at a million dollars. Now, y'all, that's in 11 years. Now, here's the thing. Was the T cubes 3X the return of the cubes? Oh, heck to the no. 
Does everybody see that? So this thing is not 3x forever. Where's my little plane in here? It's not like it's going to do 3x over the long run. There's compounding involved here. Yes, Ken. Look at this, y'all. It is 3x that's reallocated daily. But over, we could do the math, I guess. But over this, I mean, how many times? That's over 10 times, right? Uh, 10 over 11 times. Uh, 12, who knows? 12x uh, what the Q's did. So you're going, oh my God, you're telling me that like Ken said, on a down day, you're not necessarily going to go down 3x of what it does on the daily basis. You're, in the back test, it's only going down 2 point something x. And then on the upside, over a continued period of time, you're going to go much more than 3x. Y'all, I'm putting my money in that. Do y'all see that? That was the what tipped it over for me. Is it, it, it it's self-protecting? And it's self-governing when you use the AIM method with TQs or any other leverage. It's self-governing in two different ways. The AIM concept governs and the, and the Q, the behavior of the TQs themselves governs. It's a fantastic thing. And then with the power of compound interest, where well, you see what the difference is. I mean, Matt, look at this, Matt. This is 10,000 over 11 years. Think about where you've been in 11 years. Now, look, we're going to improve upon this risk-wise because we've got an algo telling you to take some off as it goes up, convert it to cash, and when it goes down, we're going to take that cash and we're going to buy more. So we're going to do this safer. Now, can you stomach a 49% drawdown? That was the, that's the, that's the issue. But what are we doing? We're doing something different. We, we've got some hedges to the downside. We're, we're covering part of this on the hedge side. We don't believe that we're going to have a 49% overall portfolio drawdown. Now, might we have drawdowns? Absolutely. But we're believing that technology is the way. Tech is here to stay. And over a long period of time, you know, best year, look at that, best year, 139%. Can you imagine you've got $100,000 in there, and in one year, next, now you're, you know, you've made a, another 139000 on your account, so you're, what, two thirty nine or whatever? It's unbelievable, y'all. I mean, you all, to, to me, it's hard to sleep at night. You know, you're dreaming about all this stuff, and you go, wow. I mean, we're about to, uh, we're, we're climbing the mountain, baby. We are climbing the mountain. So good stuff. And that's good, Mitch, that you got the book. I'm glad you got it, right? Because I'm sitting there going, how many people hadn't read the book? You got to read the book to, to buy into the algo. You know, you can't just have some fat, black, glass-wearing bastard on here talking to you every day about it and telling you how good it is. Um, and he but, did it on three-by-five cards, so that's yeah. going to make it real simple. Yeah. Real simple. Yeah, he did it on three by five cards, you know, and I just said, hey, let me take what he's doing in the three by five card. Let's put it in a spreadsheet and then let's get the RTD from Think or Swim running where it'll automatically, you know, do all the things. You just got to go through there and make sure you understand the formulas. Remember one day in one of our sessions, we broke it apart and we showed you what the formula was. And then I was so glad to see, you know, talking about governors, we did put in the governor. Uh, that Lachello took over a year to develop after he developed AIM, which is, you know, don't make a purchase unless, or a sale, unless it's over 10% of whatever, blah, blah, blah. So we put his governor in there as well. So we've got that running. All right, Enrico, you said you have the book also, but electronically, it seems he wants to use leaps instead of stocks ETF. Did I misunderstand? Yes, you've got the wrong book. Yeah, that's some cat out of uh, Texas who thinks he can do it better. Yeah, that's a cat, it. yeah. That's a cat out of Texas that he's he's doing it with leaps, and that's fine. I, I started it with a – remember I did the forward leap? I just don't like it. You know, it's not nothing wrong with it at all. You can do it with leaps. But uh, this is by LaCello, How to Make a Million Dollars in the Stock Market Automatically. I would go to Amazon to get it. You can get it on Kindle for like, what, two, three bucks, something? I mean, it's really cheap. Don't actually buy the book. Just get the Kindle version, two or three dollars, and you'll have it for life. Oh, by the way, Beth got me a Kindle little reader. It is awesome, y'all. Oh, it's so light, and it's like reading a book, and the pages look like a book. I'll show you what it is. She got it for our anniversary. It's so super cool. So I've been reading books with that. Yes, Robert Lucello. Get it on Kindle. 
you can buy the book. The book's kind of expensive if you find it in print. You might can find it on Amazon if you want to have a paper copy. But get the book by Lachello. Yeah, the guy, uh, you know, he, he did a fine job on his book, but I, I just like running the Lachello algorithm. And let's give credit where credit is due. It's nothing I come up with. Lachello did it. Uh, nothing that I've done is my stuff. We, we copy everybody. We copy Ron Bertino. We copy, uh, we use... Uh, John Kaufman's stuff, we use, uh, who else? Scott Rubel stuff. I mean, we use Option Alpha stuff. I like, you know, if I trust in and buy into these people, the only problem is all of those people are trying to sell you something, right? All of those are trying to get you to buy. I mean, Don Kaufman, as much as I love him, if I see that, you know, commercial his one more time on YouTube of, a, a, a multi-millionaire and he's out at his Arizona state and he's showing him playing basketball and his basketball court is out. I don't have time for that. That just sickens me. Right? I don't like people, you know, you know, thumbing their stuff up to try to get you to help them sustain that lifestyle. Now I'm sure Don's done well in the market, but he's making a fortune uh, selling you investment, you know, materials and all that so what i've done is i paid all these people i paid these people uh well i didn't pay uh, ron bertino and i probably need to right because he's helped us a tremendous amount and uh i probably need to cut him a check and say yeah hey man you you know you've helped us enormously uh he probably I wouldn't tell him that though <laughs> yeah i wouldn't tell him that yeah and he probably pissed off that you know if he found out hey he's showing the, the black swan hedge and all that i mean but you know it's like what are you going to do? Patent it? You can't patent it. I mean, trades are trades. I just take the best of what I found and we put it together into, yeah, uh, Weber in Texas. That's, in, that's exactly him. Let's see, where should y'all say? Uh, what is Scout's name that you mentioned? Website. Yeah, let me show you that. Okay, Kindle is of Ken99. Let me show y'all that, y'all. It's called, hold on a second. I'll show you Scott's stuff. And you need to sign up for his morning update. Stratagem trade. Let's see. Yeah, here it is. Stratagem trade. That's him. That's Scott Rubel. Now he run, he writes under the Noom Duplum. I don't even know what that is. Can you have to tell me what that is? Of like, he uses some other name. I can't remember what it is. Here it is. JL Lord. Right. And dude is smart. Tom Sosnoff told me. Hey, listen, dude's had a rough life, but he, he knows his stuff. But you need to sign up for his morning update. And it comes like three or four in the morning, and he talks about the market. Here, here it is, daily morning report. Sign up there. You need to sign up and get that. That is must reading, y'all. Okay, good. You subscribe, Enrico. Good. Yeah, this is, this is must reading. Now, the other thing that you need to sign up for, and it's free, is the morning report it's called the 5 a.m report or the 7 a.m report um uh, from uh, theo trade right they have a very comprehensive morning report that tells you what happened in the markets overnight it'll tell you the big earnings coming up but i think what i would like for all of y'all to do if you're kind of following my logic is to get out of individual stocks. I mean, get out of those. You know, we had fun with DraftKings. We had fun with, you know, whatever we were doing. But overall, you and I can't pick winners. I'm horrible at picking winners, right? And anytime I mess with stocks, I get over my head. I'm not a stock picker, but I'm a sector picker. And I think that, that technology is here to stay. Right? Technology is where we need to be. And if you don't believe that, Hey, S and P five hundred, baby. You know what is your thing that gets you up in the morning? That you go, man. Over the next ten years, you may be, you know, one of those that's like, dude, it's cryptocurrencies. I believe that you could run the Lachello algorithm on cryptocurrencies. Now that just doesn't interest me. Doesn't interest me at all. May interest you, and you can do it on crypto. Whatever you want to do. But I think that. Us doing the triple leverage ETFs will give us, I think we're going to do much better than doing crypto. I think we're going to do much better than crypto. But we'll see.
So uh, I add crypto to it. That's right. What the crap are y'all doing here? The RDE configuration is that axial followed by what the devil? It all points across the disk. The surfaces. What the devil are you talking about? Enrico. It's kind of cool though. What are you doing? Oh, wrong paste. I started to say. Angular velocity. Now we're talking. Oh, that's funny. All right, Ken's got to go. Yeah, y'all need a one-on-one. -on -one? Yeah, let's do it. Set it up. Matt, yep, set it up. All right. Do you have any time today, right after this? No, I'm at home, so I have, I have some time. 